everybody. Uh, good morning. Uh, we're going to go over the absolute basics, and there, there's a lot more to it than what I'm going to do today, but the absolute basics of setting up an amplifier for correct uh, output signal. This is a brand new line extender that I just installed, and uh, what we're going to do is to make actually three basic adjustments to this amplifier. Two of the adjustments are going to be on the forward signal. One of them is going to be on the return signal. Now the first thing I want to do uh, when I set this amplifier up is you can see here all amplifiers have a test point. Sometimes it's on the inside of the module, sometimes it's on the outside. You'll have to get familiar with your plant about where that is. But this is the output of this amplifier and it's a 20 down test point. So it's reducing the signal that's coming out of this amplifier module by 20 decibels. So I'm going to want to take that into account when I'm setting this up. Now I'll tell you the target on this amplifier per design specs is a 44 on channel 78 and a 37 on channel 2. That's called the tilt and we're going to talk about that tilt in a great deal more detail later. Here's what we're going to start with. Usually they'll come with two adjustments here on forward. One will be the forward pad which adjusts all of the signals equally. This is the equalizer, which adjusts the high band and the low band signals in very different ways. What it does is it lowers the low band signal considerably. It also has a small effect on the high band signals, but basically this is how I get my high band signals to run out higher than my low band signals. We'll talk about that more in a great detail. That concept of tilt is important. <clears throat> now what I've done to start with is I've stuffed the forward pad and the equalizer with just any old pad I got my hands on. The reason I did that is if I pull those out, I'm not going to get any output here. So I've just randomly selected a pad and an EQ. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my meter. I've got this set on tilt function. And what you'll see is right here is channel 78. Here's channel 2. And here are the signal levels that are coming out of those channels, respectively. Uh, channel 78 is the number on the bottom. Channel 2 is the number on the top. And you can see that's running out at about, let's call it, a, it's saying 16 and 7. That's actually going to be uh, 36 and 27. And my tilt, the difference between the two, is 9. Now, I already know that I want a 7 decibel tilt. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is an important concept because you'll end up chasing this signal all day long if you don't do it this way. First thing I'm going to do is regardless of the overall levels coming out of this amplifier, I'm going to adjust my tilt first. Now I've cheated a little bit. I know what value uh, equalizer I've got my finger on right now. I had previously selected an equalizer, but essentially what I need to do is I need to give this amplifier less tilt. I've got a 5 equalizer in it right now. In order to get less tilt, I'm going to drop it down to a lower value. And that lower value that seems just about right when I set this up initially was somewhere in the neighborhood of a 2. Let's see what works here. So there I've plugged in my 2. Let's go back over to my meter. And again, without paying attention to my overall levels, I now have my tilt set at the 7 that I'm shooting for. You can see that over there on the far right. So now that I've established that tilt correctly, now I'm going to work on the overall signals and I'm going to just simply change the pad. Remember that the pad changes all signals, high and low band, equally. The equalizer changes the low band much more dramatically than it does the high band. So as you can see, I've got a 13 pad uh, right now. So with this signal level at a 37 over a 29, I need more signal. Now that pad is an attenuator. So I have it attenuated at 13 decibel millivolts. I need to lower that pad and attenuate this amplifier a little bit less. So I'm gonna pull that 13 pad out. Again, I kind of cheated. Uh, I've already experimented with this. I'm going to drop in a six pad. Let's see how close we can get to the right signal. 
There's my six pad in. Remember that my target was 44 over 37. 44 on channel 78, 37 on channel two. I've got a 30, well, what's that, a 44 and almost a 37. And you know what, that's, a, that's, a, that's close enough to 37. We're gonna leave that thing alone. Okay, now uh, we've got one more adjustment that we have to make in a two-way plant. If you're only working a one-way plant, you don't have to worry about it. But we're in a two-way plant, so we need to adjust our return signal. And out here in this plant, the return signal should be running out at a 39 on a 20 down test point. All right, now I've already got a 20 down test point set up right here. And all I'm gonna do is go to my DSAM meter and I'm gonna go back to a DOCSIS test. And I'm gonna see how close or far off I am to that target of 39. We're gonna let that test run. It's gonna take a little while and I'll hopefully edit this out of the video uh, while it's waiting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about this interstage pad. One of the things that you'll notice when you track signal through one of these amplifiers is that a lot of these amplifiers now have two amplification stages. You'll see this triangle symbol is the first amplifier stage and it's just downstream of the pad and the EQ. You'll also notice it has a second amplifier stage, which is downstream of a device called an interstage pad. Now there's a lot of good reasons on occasion to use an interstage pad, and some amplifiers even have an interstage EQ. For right now, we know that this system design calls for a jumper. We're not going to be using that interstage pad or an interstage EQ if we had one. There are occasions to do it. As a general rule of thumb, we're gonna leave those interstages stuff the way they came from the factory. And we'll get into that in a little bit more advanced video down the road about when we change that interstage pad and EQ. Now, hopefully my DOCSIS test is getting close to complete. And you'll remember that I uh, had said that my target was somewhere around 39. I've got four upstream carriers. You can see that one of them is running out at a 39, the other is running out at a 41. So that's gonna be fairly close. I don't think I'm going to adjust that anymore. Uh, if I do, I'm gonna have my uh, low frequency return a little bit hotter than I want it to have. But the bottom line is we're gonna be moving in a different direction if we did need to adjust it. Let's say that was a 42. And what that means is, is the modem in this meter is working a little hard to get a signal back to the head end. So what I'm gonna do, if it was a 42, you'll notice that I've got a five pad uh, stuffed in uh, the reverse pad location here. I would just go ahead and lower that pad, say down to a three. That's gonna make the modem work a little bit less hard. So instead of say producing a 42 or a 43 or a 44, it only has to produce a 38, a 39, something like that. So remember that what you wanna do when you're adjusting these is get your interstage pad and EQ uh, stuffed with something. We don't care what it is. Uh, next thing that you wanna do is to check the tilt on your meter. You wanna adjust the tilt with the equalizer until you get the desired tilt. And then and only then do you change the padding here on the forward pad to get the overall signal level that you're looking for. The next step is to adjust your return here with a pad and an EQ. We'll talk a little bit about reverse EQ. This one has a jumper, by the way. And then also in another video, we're gonna talk about setting up uh, AGC or ALC, which is a little tricky, a few things that you're gonna to wanna to know about at some point down the road. We'll catch up with that on another video. Hope this helps with basic uh, amplifier adjustments.